this is the subject today, pain and pleasure. Mm. Right? Yeah. Two sides of the same coin. coin. Everything, everything in life is tainted with pain and pleasure. Everything. And the thing is, we're so good with pleasure, like I always say, but we're not very good with pain. And I have learned one thing in my life. When you are in pleasure, enjoy it. And when you're in pain, Accept it. <laughs> you just have to accept it to grow. And as Sri Patanjali says very clearly, accepting pain as help for purification. So this pain is coming to me to purify me, to understand who I really am. But when you live in a very material world, which we do all day long, every day, everywhere you look, it's all about material, it's really very hard to accept pain. The battle, the ego, always wants a reason, it wants a cause, it wants to go, it has to be something else that will bring you pain. And life will keep at you, and keep at you, and keep at you, until you realize. Finally, that really, as Buddha says, there is suffering. And I'd like to restart today's talk with um, a little story first, and then I will go into a little bit. Sri Patanjali does talk about pain. All great, all great masters talk about pain and pain and pleasure. The Bhagavad Gita talks about pain and pleasure, when you can transcend pain and pleasure, transcend, hear the word there, hmm? you're watching it, transcending means to be above it, have you understood it? Mm -hmm. Above yeah. it, so you can watch it, which gives you distance, so both happen in your life, so uh, this little story, I actually got an email yesterday, so maybe one of you uh, may have got the same email, but I loved it. I thought, how appropriate for my talk. And last night it was perfect. I had the same talk last night um, in Spain. But every, every talk comes out different, I think. But I'll start with this story. Uh, there was a group of hedgehogs in the forest, and the winters came, and it got really, really cold in the winter. So they all decided, ah, I sent it to you. And so they all decided that let's huddle together and let's keep warm. That way, all the animals are dying off in the winter and we won't die off, we can keep each other warm. So they did that. They cuddled each other and they kept each other warm. But while they were keeping each other warm, at the same time, their pricks were was hurting each other, so they were in pain. So after a little while, they said, we're warm, but we've still got so much pain. So they decided to all separate. So when they separated, one by one, a hedgehog started dying in the cold. So half the group died, and the other half decided, said, oh my god, look what happened. We separated because we had the pain, but as a result, they're dead. So they can no longer enjoy the good summers because they're dead. It's too late, so let us accept the pain. Let's huddle, at least we'll live through the winter, and in summer, we'll have fun. So that's what they did. They huddled together. <laughs> they look at each other, these two. <laughs> so they huddled each other, and we accepted the pain, because they knew the pain was what was keeping them alive to enjoy the summer. So, and they felt it was better to do that than to die sad and alone. And that's the moral of the story. I thought it was perfect for pain and pleasure. Any relationship you take on, anything, mother, child, uh, husband, wife, friendship, whatever, always comes with a bite. <laughs> Don't think it goes smoothly. There is no such a thing as perfection. And the language should be pain is normal. Not, ooh, I'm in pain. Pain is normal. I already know. You already know. You already know all these years of studying the truth. Have you ever been able to have anything without pain as a result or a consequence? Let me read to you what Sri Patanjali says. 
you know, because this is age-old pain and pleasure. We've had to go through it for generations, and it will continue for the entire Earth time. It will never go away. <laughs> Because we are in a university, and this is one thing we need to be very clear about. Here it says, To one of discrimination, everything is painful indeed. To one of discrimination, what does this mean? For one who's really thought about things, who's meditated, who's asked questions, it's about life, you know, what is it really all about? It's called life, death, you know, suffering. Indeed, all things are painful. Why? Due to its consequences. The anxiety and fear over losing what is gained. You have something you love, you have something you really wanted for a long, long time. The moment you get it, what happens to you? You're fearful. Ah, I don't want to lose it. Ah, I don't want to lose it. Ah, I don't want to lose it. So even while you're in the pleasurable experience, you're already worried about losing it. So the pleasure is tainted with pain. And then he goes on to say, the resulting impressions left in the mind to create renewed cravings. What happens? All the good things that you've had in your all the pleasurable experiences you've had in your life. Even if you leave a negative situation, the cravings, the old cravings will keep coming up to your mind. They'll keep coming because you remember, oh, this was so pleasurable, I'd like to experience it again. Oh, this was so good. So the cravings are going to drive you mad. And those cravings, again, Painful, aren't they? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you see, you can't run away from it. And then he continues to say, and constant conflict amongst the three gunas control the mind. Constant. The three gunas. What are the three gunas? Sattva, Rajas, and Tamas. So nature already already will give you so many of these energies in your life. You know, there'll be a sattvic pre period and you'll think, ah, it's so wonderful. And before you know it, it becomes rajasic. And before you know it, it becomes tamasic, right? So already there is so much to deal with. So much. And it will always be. And you start to understand, oh my God, everything that I think is pleasurable, ultimately, will bring pain. And everything that is painful, ultimately, will bring pleasure in the case of having a child, working really hard to get a degree, struggling nights to get something you want, or days, and when you get it, the pleasure of it, the pain before the pleasure, and the pleasure before the pain. Have you seen it is a constant cycle? It will never end. And this is the way of the world. And man, we constantly look for that pleasure. And that's why when you are in pleasure, enjoy it. Enjoy the moment. Enjoy the laughter. Enjoy the pleasure. When you're in the pain, accept it. There's no other Running, craving for the better times when you are in pain will only increase the pain and take longer to heal. But acceptance will bring a peace. And then finally, with acceptance, which burns because accepting pain as help for purification, when you accept the pain, it's going to burn you. You're going to suffer. It's, you're not going to like it. But you know, it will make you to a person or a human being to realize the truth. And the truth is, it's a never-ending cycle of desires and wants and needs. And until you break that desire, that all those cravings, and that is non-attachment, you will always be suffering. Now, does it sound so depressing? Yes, right? But it's not so depressing. <laughs> it's actually quite fun when you know this to be the truth. When you know this to be the truth, 
It is actually quite exciting. Now that I know everything, Harion, is painful, I'm going to really understand what my life is all about. And then you also start your, your, <coughs> you start giving more time to higher values. Things of higher values. Like for example, just giving you a simple example, you look at your body and it's aging and it will always continue to age, right? And maybe you spent years looking after your body, hours upon hours upon hours, all just body consciousness. And even spending all those hours, you will still get the wrinkle, even buying a, a 200 pounds for cream, you will still get that <laughs> one. So many people, you still get it. It comes to a point that you'll say, okay, you know, all this is making me suffer. Every day I look in my mirror and I'm suffering because I want something else, something else to make me look younger. And then you get tired. And then when you get so tired, you actually become quite free. You just let it all go. Because you're like, you know what? I'm getting old. So what am I going to do with my time? Spend all day doing this until I get to my bed, deathbed? Or go for Enjoy. something higher? Mm -hmm. Higher. Something that can make a difference to this world. Something that you can really contribute to the world and make a difference. Your everything, your aspect of life will change from I me mine to um, yeah, it will. Rain does that to you. Do I, you know what? I can't be bothered with I me mine. It's too painful. I don't want to do it. You know, after all I just don't want to do it anymore. It's a natural progression. You can't force this. As the Om Trambagam mantra actually says, actual translation is just as a cucumber falls off the tree when it's ready. It's too heavy with the weight. So realization is like that. You become so heavy with earthly things that you go, that's it, I'll drop it off. And it's natural. In its course of time, it happens by itself. You can't force it to happen. What you can do is give yourself knowledge so that when you're going through a painful or very difficult period in your life, you can understand that normal Normal. There's no perfect relationship. Don't try looking for it. You will be disappointed. There is always something. Always something. Yes, you can have a good, healthy relationship. But even in a healthy relationship, there is arguments. What can you do? Or there is disagreements. Or there are different ways of looking at the same thing. It will always happen. Because God wanted to know God in each individual person, and each individual person is unique with their own mindset and their own abilities. And so understanding this will give you a little bit of freedom from all the suffering. This is why Sri Patanjali starts off by saying, to one of discrimination, start to understand if you really thought about this over and over and over again, no. All things bring pain. You go to something, a good holiday. I mean, you I don't want to go home after a holiday. Bring pain. You have a pleasurable holiday and you eat so much mm, delicious the first three days. By the end of the week, oh, man, I'm so, I need to lose weight. You come home, oh, I've eaten too much, I've drunk too much. And people come, I feel sick now, and I feel sick. I mean, mm. You just had a holiday to feel better. What have you done no. to yourself in your holiday? <laughs> Holidays <laughs> waste of time. <laughs> the holiday should make, bring you back revived, energized. So I go, next time you go on a holiday, put in a regime. You know, maybe go make sure, okay, in the morning I'm going to do my hatha. If you don't like hatha, I'm going to go for a walk or in the evening, whatever you want. Mm. You want to get up late on holiday, no problem. Go for a swim, but do some exercise. Do some practice because otherwise you're going to come back feeling bloated, uncomfortable, and the good holiday that was supposed to bring you so much pleasure, you come back home and say, I need another holiday. Mm. What a waste of money. Might as well stay home in the first place. You know? <laughs> I recommend the walk in Scotland that we did. Great. I don't recommend a cruise. <laughs> 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 Cruise until you can control 
your senses and you know but some people have heard go to cruises and they come back stuffed yes yeah and then because well, apparently you can eat all day yes, yes. 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 but you know i was so very lucky i went to a chef who is not also a food person you eat when you're hungry we both are not people that have yeah but of course you yeah. you can but there's but i was very lucky can you imagine yeah. my husband <laughs> <little eating>? he's <laughs> sitting with him all day eating <laughs> <laughs> i was very lucky no no it was perfect we were not uh, food people. Yeah. As such, oh, we like good food, <coughs> but it's not. Sure. Uh, it's the atmosphere that always made a bigger difference to us than, than the food. So, you see, there is that, again, pleasure and pain. We still so have that, food, so. that uh, cruise that you wanted to sort out, remember? For the yogis. Yeah. So maybe it will happen. Maybe well, it will be nice. Yes. Yeah. I don't yeah. you think yeah. it would be really yeah. nice if it was went on a cruise? Yeah. yeah. I think we're going to have so much fun. Get up really early, meditate really? on the deck. Oh. Yeah. Oh, it would be great. Welcome the day in on sunrise. and don't For when? I love it. I'll remind her. She's out with you. The pleasure of you eating, then the pain now of when you're going to have a day.
but they always end up in pain. Even the enjoyment of our present pleasures is usually painful because we fear it's loss. Imagine you have a high position, appreciated by hundreds of people. Everybody says you're a great person. Gradually you learn to love that position. Isn't it nice to be admired by everybody? To have hundreds of devotees around you, thousands of disciples across the country? This is really fine. But a fear might simultaneously come in. Suppose I lose this position. <laughs> if my disciples leave me one after another, what will happen to me? Where is the pleasure of the position then? So in other words, any position you get in life, no matter how high, don't let it go to your head. Because what happens? You never know. Look what they did to Lord Jesus one day. Hosanna. Hosanna King. King of the highest, next week, crucify him. And here he says, what happens? Today you've got your position, tomorrow you lose it. So don't put so much into your position. This is why I love this advice. Every day, contemplate a little about this sutra. Contemplate. Then you'll say, oh, pain is normal. Life is normal. You lose your position, no big deal. I'll get another one. You lose money. Okay, it's like a graph, like the stock market, up and down, up and down. One day we're there, one day this. And what do we do in yoga? What, what we do is we learn with meditation, we learn with all these techniques rather than to do this, which is 99% of the world do, and they suffer. <gasps> like when I talk to people who have no practice, it's very hard for them to understand this. And the people who practice yoga expect the person who doesn't Practice to understand what they're thinking. You cannot. One patient said to me today or the other day, you know, why do I always have to do the work? So because you're the yogi. The other person doesn't understand these concepts. They have nothing to cling on to. So they are ah, collapsing in their pain. They're panicking in their pain. But you have the tools. You have the tools to at least, okay, it's doing this. Okay, I understand this is the way of the world. They don't. They can understand it by reading books, but unless you've done, you all know now, unless you've actually done the practice yourself by contemplating every day on these things, not sitting down to meditate and contemplating on your problems, that is not going to help you one single bit. Or reading a book and reading thousands of books and reading everything. Oh, I read the power of now. Oh, we have to live for every minute of every day. Oh, now yeah, I truly understand that next minute. Oh, we're going to the bed. <laughs> <laughs> really happy you understood that, Carter. Oh, Wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> you read it. What did they read it? All that information go. Oh, but I know. If you know, you would not be crying over spilled milk, would you? You don't know. You wouldn't, you'd be crying, yes, but you wouldn't go, ah, 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 poor me, kind of syndrome. So you have to understand where you are on this, this, this scale, this, this ladder. But if you practice this every day, then there will be no attachment to any position, anything in your life. There will be like, okay, this is all temporary. So when I'm enjoying, I'm going to enjoy it. When I'm not enjoying it, oh, it's over, it's over, finish, huh? Let it go. That's the non-attachment. Now that is difficult, because people think non-attachment means you don't love anybody. No, it means you just love everybody. Mm. More, because you're not creeping, you're not holding on, you're not stopping. You are allowing the flow of love without wanting to possess it or ownership. You actually love more, because you're allowing people to grow the way they need to grow. But it doesn't mean you don't love. You love. So let me continue because he says some wonderful things about all this, and I'd rather you listen to his words. Then he talks about the stock market, which you all know. <laughs> uh, let's see. There, even there, he talks. We might lose our position, our money, or our beauty. There are even people who ensure their eyes, nose, earlobes, even fingers and toes. They become anxious about even touching things. They're always tense. 
It's all right to have a beautiful face. It's all right to have anything. As long as you don't let these things bring you anxiety and who knows the other word? Pain and <laughs> fear. Oh. <laughs>
The anticipation is pleasure, but never getting to meet is painful. Mm. And that's what he writes about. And this is life, isn't it? It's yeah. like this. The, the anticipation is exciting. The fact that they will never meet is painful. painful. So I thought, oh, that's a pretty uh, poem. Yeah? I had to look it up on the internet, but I didn't have my computer today. So like, no time to look it up. But if you can, it's called Ode to a Grecian So here it says, uh, for example, Gurdo says, once I had a beautiful car, I don't know when I'm going to get another one like it. Whenever you see someone with such a car, it makes you unhappy. You'll be reminded of your old high times. And many people, you know, they always think back to the past, back to the past, back to the past. And then they can never be happy in the moment because they remember those times. How many people mm. I've known in the last few years had everything, nice homes, uh, nice um, everything, and they've lost everything in these, this credit crunch. So many people have left the coast because so many people just come to the Sanga in Spain and half of them have left because no more jobs, no more, no more anything. They had to leave, go back to the country, their own country and get the dole. And they were so sad, you know, everything, gone. You go, oh, but it was such a nice summer night. Do you want to add insult to it? You say, well, you had it, you never appreciated it. You never appreciated it. Never appreciate it. You always compare with something else when you've had it. It could be better. But when you have something, just appreciate it and enjoy it from when you have it. And know that in what you have, there is perfection in the imperfection. That the imperfection is given to you to raise you, to, to help your mind to transcend both pain and pleasure. So the imperfection is a gift to you. If everything was perfect, you would never want to die. When your time came or when illness came, it would be way, way, way too hard for you to leave the world. So in a way, it's all kindness. It's all kindness. And then what you can do is make your life as, for me, as sweet as possible. In the pain, in the pleasure, make it sweet. Bring a sweetness to your life by loving all, by serving all. And accepting every moment. Make it bittersweet, as they call them. All yes. the poets have written about bittersweet, right? We all know the meaning of it. And there is a, in that word, there is the sweetness and there is the bitterness all in one. And just smile at it. Bittersweet memories, you know? And, and then there is like a story. There's like a fulfillment in your mind. And you transcend. Everything is a teaching. Everything is a learning. So you transcend the pain. You transcend even the pleasure. And because you transcend the pleasure, you're no longer craving, I want these pleasurable moments. There's no craving for that anymore. Because you understand, pleasure eventually brings pain. And in that non-craving, is called non-attachment. That non-craving, as Sri Patanjali says, the consciousness of self-mastery in one. So when you are conscious, that you have gained some mastery in your mind, mastery over your thoughts, towards objects for the desires or the needs or the cravings towards objects mm -hmm. seen or heard is non-attachment. What he's saying there is when you have self-mastery, you see these cravings come up in you and you are able, because some people may say, oh, da 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 da, it's such a great download. I wish I could do that too. You're able to say, no, I'm really glad for you. I mean, because I know where that's going to lead. From you wanting more and more and more and never being happy. Forget it. I don't need to go down that road. I'm happy as I am. And then you can make decisions very clearly where you are in life and what you want in your life. You have to know where you are. You have to know yourself really well. It's very difficult to become like, I can't be attached or to force it. You can't. It doesn't work like that. 
The only way it can work is gradually, as Sri Patanjali says, and Gurudev says here, practice this in your life, this one sutra daily, what does he tell us? For a long, long time. time. Without a break and with all our hearts. I'm so glad you know that so well now. <laughs> <laughs> so, my question to all of you, you know it in words so well mm -hmm. now. Do you practice it in daily life so well too? That is my question to you. Yeah. We practice yeah. whether it's well or not. But do you practice every day? The effort yes. is there to some extent. Then effort towards the denotness of mind. It's practice. Mind. Mm. Wonderful. That's all that is required. To some extent, no? Sometimes yeah. It's more well, so practice. to the intent practitioner, practitioner, this, this samadhi comes, comes very quickly. quickly. <laughs> but if it's now and then, no, take your time. It's up to you, isn't it? He says, and this all depends on your practice, whether it's mild, you get results very slowly, you still get results, whether it's medium, you get a bit more, more and if it's intense, but he does say, if it's intense, this samadhi will come very, very quickly. quickly, if it's mild and medium, who knows, except that too. Yeah. But it's better than the trying, because the trying is, I'm going to try and touch you. Well, what is that? Because, you know, can I try? I either do it or don't. Yeah, it's exactly. a funny word, that trying, that we many times use, thinking yeah. that we're doing something. Yeah. Yeah, so. Yes, I like that. Mm. But buddy, trying is a difficult thing. Yeah. You do it, don't try it. You get this, you know. Yeah. Yes, you're absolutely right. And I hear so much, I'm trying. Why try? Do it. Just do it. Thank you. At least just one little percent. Right. You know, but you still Isn't it? Don't they say just do it? Just do it. Just do I it. think when we use the word try is because we know we're not committed. Wonderful. That's yes. a great. Uh, so we don't analyze. want to then yeah. let ourselves down by saying I was going to do it, but I knew I wasn't going to. Because perhaps we don't want the results. So. so Scared of the results. We still need to go through the burning of it. Still some encouragement. If you even put the 1% of effort, it's still 1%, even though it's not a lot, but it's still 1% towards. Something. Absolutely. Arjuna asks uh, Lord Krishna, chapter 6 of the Bhagavad Gita, and he goes, you know, what happens when, you know, I do all this practice, and you're asking me to do this, and meditate, and do this, and clean my mind, and what happens? <laughs> I'm doing all this, and I should die. I'm neither here, <laughs> Know that I've enjoyed the world or my life there, you know. What's the point of it all? And what does Lord Krishna say to him? Do not worry. Not worry. And nothing, everything that you have done, nothing will come to waste. Nothing will be wasted. You will either be born in the next life to the family of the prosperous where you can, and spiritual where you can continue your practices, or an even higher birth to totally spiritual people where you can really elevate yourself. But life will make you come to these kind of families. So don't worry. Nothing you do that is good will be lost. So don't worry. If you can do little in this lifetime, it will not be lost. Next lifetime you will get a body where you can continue your practices. And obviously, this is what's happened. If you watch yourself in this room, obviously, this is what's happened. But if you don't get it this time around, don't worry, you have many times. And some people go, oh, I don't want another life in this world. And you better not, you better stop saying, I don't want another life in this world. Because that's aversion. And that is also not non-attachments. I don't want. Do you see, Mimla? I'm not coming back to this earth again. Oh, oh, <laughs> They're not in your hands, you so, know. <laughs> can you have situations of people saying, oh, I don't want to progress because I don't want to leave this yes, life I've already? Had I've had, I've had so, people, I've, I've, I've had people who said, oh, I love this world so much. I said, great. I love the drama of the world. Great, enjoy it. Why not? That's what they love. They're not suffering. They love the drama. Would that not be... <laughs> That's I their journey. That, why think so much? That's their journey. They have because their peace. It, ha it happens to me sometimes. And I think, well, maybe I don't want to overcome and transcend pain and pleasure. Because 
if you get it all right, then that, that will be it. I wish it was <laughs> that easy. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so then perhaps I think, well, obviously it's lack of faith, because if I had total faith, I wouldn't mind leave, leaving this life already. Because you know that the next will be better, or... or you know, t um, also the desire to leave this life very quickly is also not good, it's still a desire. Mm -hmm. So that you don't yeah. want to leave this life so quickly is not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. It's also a desire. Let our lives be long enough to fulfill the human mission, at least of understanding that we can have a lot of joy in this pain. Let us let us see it all as divine play, a divine mm. comedy. A, you know, for me sometimes I just think it's a comedy. So, ah, I just look at me. Oh, what have you done? You've done this, and you've done this, and I'm like this. You know, and it's a divine comedy. You're having fun with me, Lord. Enjoy it. You enjoy it. I'm having fun. He enjoys it, and you're having fun. Yeah, and, uh, always. And if I'm having pain, it's your fault. You have the pain. <laughs> you you brought me here, you fix me. Either way, you brought me here. Energy, you fix me. The rest is mind stuff. And mind stuff is normal. I'm a human being. You are a human being. We're all human beings. You know, all the great saints and sages were human beings. I watched my master and he was so human. You worked with him three months. You saw the human side of him. You know? It was so natural. There was no pretense with the humanness of who we are. Mm -hmm. We are human beings. No, actually, we're spiritual beings having a human experience. experience. So we might as well make the most of this experience. Don't you want your children to make the most of their life? You cannot want your children to make the most of their lives if you don't. So you can see by example. You can also see when parents change, how their children's cha children change. I've seen this a thousand times. When the parents become more mature in a relationship, the children become more mature. When the parents are immature, the children are immature. The children imitate the parents. Mm -hmm. And then it's a vicious cycle of blame. Mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, victim role, this manipulation, all this happens and it's all very innocent. But I have noticed that when one person changes, all the family changes. It's very interesting. So always go for the higher because it takes you out of all this mucky, mucky trouble. <laughs> so should I continue with what Gurudev says? Um, in reality, nothing is bad in this world. But the three gunas are forever tossing the mind. What you enjoy one minute, you hate the next. When you are in a good mood, your children may come and play. And, sorry, when you're in a good mood, your children may come and play with you. But when you are in a terrible mood, you say, get out, don't disturb me. <laughs> Real pleasure comes from detaching ourselves completely from the entire world and standing aloof. Making use of the world as a master would. Only in that can we have any pride. Only in that we'll feel, oh my God, I did something, you know, managed. I am not saying that because everything is painful, we should run away from it. That doesn't work. Wherever we go, the world follows. If you don't understand the world and attempt to run away, you can never succeed. I have seen people who cannot run their own homes or cooperate with their family say, I am disgusted. I renounce. I don't want anything. I'm going into the spiritual field to meditate and practice yoga. They try to run away from family life, but once they come to an ashram, they face a whole new family at home. <laughs> at least in the original family, they knew the people. And those people probably had a little consideration for them. <laughs> in an ashram, all the faces are new. In the beginning, there isn't much affection. Each person may have his or her own problems. Excuse me, I need to take some water. 
interesting, isn't it? Mm. <clears throat> so, when someone can't adapt himself to his known family, how can he expect to adapt to an unknown group? A known devil is much better than a known one. Better the devil you know than the devil one you don't. <laughs> Isn't it truthful? Do you hear all the words? Do you see only truth coming out? It's so truthful, isn't it? Mm. And we're always running away because we think something else is going to be pleasurable. And I've seen many, many people go to the ashram, uh, uh, renounce in, in all traditions, Buddhist tradition, the Hindu tradition. How many traditions? We've seen so many people. I've seen people leave their families. They can't deal with their families, so I'm going to serve God. And then they go away. And, oh my God, poor ashrams. They have all these people that get in so much trouble. <laughs> Because they're so messed up. They haven't been able to deal with their own families. That's why I say family life is not a bad thing. It's a good, really good training ground. Why? Because at least you have the people who love you. you know, I always say my husband was my greatest guru. Because, you know, when I did something wrong, you go, that's not yoga. <laughs> <laughs> that's not yoga. I'm not going to call yoga. <laughs> I'm going to call Gurda. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Listen, isn't this what happens to all of you? Yes, yes. And in the beginning, I used to go, oh, no, don't call Gurda. Oh, please, don't, 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 don't. No, this is between us. Why do you want to involve Gurda? In the end, I mean, after a few years, <laughs> he'd say, this is not yoga. Is it really? In your opinion? Fine. Here's the phone. Call Gurda. <laughs> <laughs> didn't say it anymore. Um, he did use it on me in the last few years, but the early years, because you see, he was my guru, he was teaching me. I wasn't sincere, I knew the words. I knew the words, I knew, but I had the practice hadn't seeped into the consciousness. It takes time for the practice to seep into your consciousness, into every single cell, there are atoms. You know, you constantly repeat something, it gets into every single cell, but it takes time because there's so much debris there, there's so much wrong thinking, there's so much to clean up before the new things can come mm -hmm. in. So he was a great guru in the sense that when I thought I knew it, he knew I did. So you go, is that really <laughs> yoga? In the end, I was confident. So there was no fear. Because I knew I was coming from a pure place. So even if he had called Guru Dev and said, oh, Nani did this, I felt so confident at that point that my actions were based on love. Didn't really matter. Please take the call and tell whoever you are. So you know, many times I told them, why don't you come to satsang and tell them how you think about me? <laughs> you know, they were They great. They, I, know. I don't want people to put me on a pedestal. <laughs> Wonderful girl, run away. <laughs> so many times I told them. Honest, it's quite funny. I think about it now. It is it's funny. quite funny. I said, please come. I'd really love you to announce how awful I am. It'd be great people to know. And he goes, can't do it. Because um, sometimes when a person is angry with themselves, they what do they do? You all know this. You blame it on the person you love the most. You just do. You just do. So then after a while you learn, it's just, wow, that they love me so much. So it's just a reflection. Don't get attached to that negativity. Of course, there are days when it's too much and you can't handle it. And those are the days you use your tools. Okay, I'm going away. I'm going to travel for five days. Goodbye. Don't want to be with you. <laughs> you know, and that non-attachment makes them think, hmm? okay, fine. This is nonsense. I'm not willing to go into this level of nonsense. I'm doing my thing. By the time you come back, everything is cleared and everything is nice. And you know, what a lot of nonsense, you know? So life is like an experiment constantly. So in a householder life, in a way, it's very lucky when you have this kind of uh, cooperation, if you understand it to be, and not somebody attacking you, but teaching you. Every time somebody is attacking you, it's your guru talking to you. If you can really have that vision very clearly, and you know, one of the persons that really taught me that was um, Mother Teresa. You know, when I used to read her books, I say taught me because I felt through her books, she spoke to me, you know, and she said she looked at the prostitute and she'd see Lord Jesus. She'd look at the thief and all she could see was Lord Jesus. And she'd be healing the sick and all she could see was Lord Jesus. And she talked 
to anybody, and all she could see was Lord Jesus. So, you know, when people screamed at her and horrible things were done, because she had to face some horrible times, but she had to read about any of those things because she saw everybody as Lord Jesus. Jesus. So when I read her books, they really inspired me. This is why, I think it's Patty who gave us that. Mother Teresa, who gave us Mother Teresa? Adriana. Adriana gave Adriana us. Ben. When she came to our center, I was saying, thank you, good, great mentor. So there are many great souls that are great mentors in our life. And my respect highly to her, um, because that's, that's how you see things. And then you can transcend pleasure and and pain. And can I tell you the stories? Because you might find it funny now when you hear it, right? Because many of you can relate to it. Yeah, for sure. You know? Mm -hmm. So it's, you're, it's, it's actually quite a comedy. You know, but in retrospect, when you look back at the time, always things burn. At that moment when you hear, oh, you're not good enough, it burns. But you know it's the ego. Okay, let it burn. Let the ego burn. It's okay, the ego can burn. It's no big deal. It's only the ego. It's only my human personality. No big deal. And what is my human personality? The whole scheme of things? Look up the stars and look down at yourself. You're not even a great person. <laughs> Forget it. Don't give yourself so much importance. <laughs> Forget it. I'm not even a grain of sand. And then you become your ego. You let it go. It's not important enough. <coughs> you will only, in your life, again, argue for only things that bring you to a higher place. When it goes into petty stuff, you will say, I don't want to deal with it. Let somebody else do it. Really, you will change your consciousness. will change by itself. You won't even deal with it anymore. There's no need. You know it's petty and you know it's funny. So maybe you dealing with it may not be appropriate because you may laugh. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> she laughs because she knows what I mean, right? <laughs> Wherever we are, we have to learn to handle things properly. We can't always change environments running here and there, but once we know how to handle one small family, we can handle a larger group. A family life is a training place for a public life. If you can't face a sharp word from your mate, <laughs> well, that's a nice English word. <laughs> from your mate, how can you face such words from a stranger? The world is a training place where we learn to use the world without getting attached. Instead of saying, to one of discrimination, everything is painful. It becomes, to one of discrimination, everything is pleasure. <laughs> a person with such an understanding has the magic wand to convert everything into happiness. Pleasure and pain are but the outcome of your approach. The same world can be a heaven or a hell. The way to begin, though, is with the feeling. It's all painful. Let me detach myself. Let me not get involved in it. Let me not approach the world with selfish motives. Once this is accomplished, you see with a different vision. So what do you have to do first? It's all painful. Let me detach a little. Let me not get so involved. Do you know how you want everybody really likes to get involved in everybody's business? Have you seen it? Yeah. And it creates like a whirlpool, and everybody's like, I don't know what you're doing, and, da, 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 da. and when you're in, sucked in that, haven't you notice everybody comes out exhausted? Mm. And come out exhausted. It's too much getting involved in everybody's, and you, I've got so much in my head. This one has said this, this one has said, no, you can listen. Let it all go. Don't get involved. Don't get sucked in. Right? Mm -hmm. Hear it all. Yes, 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 yes. Do this, this, this. Leave it. Drop it. Don't keep it in your mind. Hard to do. It takes training. It takes training. When, you dis when you're in the discriminative, if I may interrupt, sorry. Yes, you may. When you're in the discriminative mind, you can do that. Yes. But most of 
that circle or, or that buzz, they're feeding off each other, so Correct. they don't. This is why I said it's, 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 they don't see, they just live in this kind of sickness, you know, unhappiness. Yeah, yeah I call it a sickness because you really yeah. don't go home feeling it here, don't you? It's like, a, and then mm. you don't feel like you lose the excitement, and I think this is how a lot of people go into depression. They lose the excitement of life, but yet they can't be without it, so they don't know. They go, they're miserable. They come, they stay home, they're miserable. There is nowhere for them to escape to. So they start praying and pray, God help me, God help me, God help me. But they haven't sorted the problem. They haven't understood. You know, all life is a learning. All life is, you know, is here for teaching us that look, this is all temporary, this is all temporary, this is all temporary. And once you know it, everything becomes pleasurable. Because that depression of losing something is not going to haunt you for the rest of your life. Yes, you will always feel the pain. You know, I'll tell you I've lost my husband, I'll always feel the pain. But it won't haunt me. It won't stop me. Yes, maybe my memory went for a year. I used to tell everybody, forget about my memory for one year. Thank <laughs> God it's back. <laughs> Thank God I've got it back. But really, for one, I just had to accept it. And who taught me this? All the people that I've counseled who lost a partner before. All of them, same thing, after the partner died, for, for a year they would say, I've lost my memory. I was not, did I have a cure to watch it? And I go, you haven't lost your memories. It's a grieving process. Just accept it. adjusting. Yeah. So when it happened to me, I go, oh, great. I told my daughter, mom, you've never forgotten these things before. You never left things. It's, it's grieving. It's, it's a, a way of grieving. It's, it's, don't get attached to it. No, it will pass. Oh my god, oh my god, some people come to me panicked like that. You know, no, it's okay, it's perfectly normal. And the moment I tell them it's perfectly normal, it's like in a few minutes, everything is relieved from them. I see the whole body is relaxed, and I go, Thank God I had this painful experience to be able to be able to give them this information that can give them some peace. Not only have they lost their partners, they feel they've lost their memory too. It's normal. It's normal. So normal. Mm -hmm. Just accept it. Your whole life has been torn apart. It's normal. So um, when they understand it, at that point, what happens? They transcend that fear. They transcend that anxiousness, that fear. And this is what knowledge does to you. It helps you transcend it. Not that it will go away, but you transcend it. Mm. And you have to go. Yes, I know. Go. So, so this is the way to begin. It's all painful. Let me detach myself. Let me not let me become so involved. Let me not approach the world with selfish motives. Mm. Hear that? When I approach the world, let it not be selfish for my gain, or for the betterment for me. But let me, when I approach the world, let it be for the betterment of all. Not just I, me, me, me. I need, I want, I have to be happy. But let me approach the world with all. The feeling of, let us, you know, as Gerda's song, let us walk together. You know the music, can you sing? You know it? Walk together. Let us walk together. Let us live together as one when we live together in Sachidananda and the masters will be done. Yeah, and that's the Yeah, and, and, and this is this is it's a beautiful song. So and this is really the difference when we approach the world, we approach the world from a different standpoint. Not what, as uh, Kennedy said, not what can you do for me, but what can I do for you. And this is the deepest approach. People can say, oh, I like to do this for the world, but I like to do this for the world because I want to be famous, or I want to be noticed, or I want this, I want this, but I'm really doing this because I want my name to be up in lights. It comes from a selfish motive. It does. Whatever you say it is, or I want to be seen with this person, or I want this, it comes from a very selfish motive. 
when you approach the world, ask. Ask, dear Lord, every day, let me serve for love. Easy prayer. Very easy prayer. Let me serve, love, give, purify, meditate, realize, be good, do good, be kind, and be compassionate. Just keep repeating that, keep repeating that, keep repeating that. And it frees you. They say, what is the benefit all the time giving, 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 giving? We should learn to receive. But in that giving, everything you need will come to you. Look, I didn't expect such an incredible party. What did you all do for me? So much that I feel so much. You know, so much. I go, I'm so blessed. I really didn't want so much, but you still insisted giving me so much. And I didn't feel I'm doing anything. But look how you reacted. So life is life is has energy as its way of doing things, whether you want it or not. And like Lakshmi said, you have to learn to receive it. <laughs> <laughs> so this is what it is. You don't just just go to the world without selfish motives. You try not to put I in the place, you know. Once this is accomplished, you see a different vision. You begin to use the world for a different purpose, and you will experience happiness. Before you learn to swim, water seems to be a dreadful place. There's the answer to your question. Water seems to be a dreadful place. Suppose I drown, what will happen to me? But once you learn to swim, you love the water. The world is like that. You have to learn to swim in this ocean of samsara to become a master swimmer. Mm -hmm. To become a master swimmer, you have to learn. And in the beginning, it is fearful, like you said. What if? How? What if I can't do this? Or what if I'm not good enough? Or what if I fall? Like I don't know, what if I fail? Will I lose everything? What if? What if? What if? What I learned <laughs> very <laughs> quick. Take away the buts and ifs and whys. And just do. Just do she said. Don't say try. What if I try and this doesn't work? What if this? You want to do it? Do it. If you get a no, no. If you get a yes, yes. Accept anything, pain or pleasure, all part of the same coin. You got heads, and tails, tails yeah. male, female, black, white, day. good, bad, day, Up, night. You see, it has to be. Otherwise, if we didn't have those things, there would be no duality. We would not be living in this earth. There would be no fun. There would be nothing to do. So, and you can see pain and pleasure is just pairs of opposites that we have to endure, as the Bhagavad Gita says. Krishna tells Lord Ar Arjuna, patiently endure this. <laughs> patiently, right? I love that line. <laughs> patiently endure, endure, endure this. And this is the practice. So we have 10 minutes. I thought today, if you all agree, we'll do a little creative visualization on pain and pleasure. If that's okay with you? Yes. Okay? Yes, sure. Oh, uh, of course, yes. Ari Patanjali every day. How many chapters should I? There are three chapters. Up to where should I be? There are three chapters? No, there's four oh, books. Four, four, four books. books, yeah. So I read all four books. Oh, I don't understand. Where is that stuff? Okay, I will give you uh, the syllabus. Okay. Don't read all of it because some of it is so way beyond. Uh, the last really, one is difficult. Yeah, Kaivalya Pada, yes. Yeah. It's, it's difficult to understand what he means unless you've gone through some of the things. This is why, you know, in the beginning when Guru Dev gave the syllabus, and I go, why has he only done so few sutras? And then after many years of studying, uh, the others, I learned to understand because of experience, more by experience, by the words I couldn't understand. And um, what I'd like you to do is how to follow it, is follow the syllabus that he's given. So in book one, just read one to 16 to start. 
if you have any questions, because I don't live here, we have many. Can Roger the yoga teachers put up your hands, please? Okay, we have many local teachers. Yes, you are Raj Yogi teacher. You can put up your hand. <laughs> but, and if you ever have a question, I'm sure they wouldn't mind if, if, if would you mind if they just called? You know, yeah. I don't understand this. Sutra, could you explain to me? And But what I'll do is I'll ask Patty has the whole syllabus that we study. I've got her email as well. Okay, I'll ask her to send you the sutras you should read. Good question. And the rest don't read yet. And then when you read those, we will do We can. Actually, after we finish in September, we can do the other sutras. All of you are ready to do the more advanced sutras. Should we do that? Be nice. Yes. Should Should we, always, continue? we always get beginners, though. Yeah, we always get beginners. <laughs> and we it's might too much. guys. We might just blow them out. We will blow them <laughs> But when I get my new place, you can well, maybe so. come. You know, you once a month, extra. yeah, extra yeah. for the advanced practitioners who can understand. Or a teacher's day, advanced day, thingy. <laughs> I don't have to look for a place then, it'll be easy for me. Yes. So, yeah, of course we can do that. I really would. You know, I hope to travel less with this. I hope to travel really? less. I hope to. Let people wow. come. I hope to, but don't say it to the gods. <laughs> I'm scared to say it to the gods. <laughs> right. If you invite them, they can come and they want. They want. <laughs> but I know I still have to travel for another couple of years. I do know that. But it will have to happen. It has to happen. That's the law as well. But um, yeah, of course, anything. I'm so happy. I love the other sutras. Now that I understand that, I can really. Uh, be able to share it with you, yeah, I'd love to do that. But she's right, when beginners come, it's too much. Like you said, you've been practicing so long, some you can't, just way above the head, yeah? Don't know what he's talking about, Sri Patanjali. Because you have to reach quite a level of practice to understand the, the other sutras. Otherwise, it's double dutch. It's a good question. No, I love your question. And Sam, would you please do I will, I'll send her? it to her. Yes, yes. thank yes. you. And then you follow the syllabus and any questions ask. These kind of questions teachers love. When students come for spiritual or growing because they want to be more spiritual, it's the best students in the world because they want the highest goal. I don't them mm -hmm. Great. So any teacher will be so glad to give you that. Oh, you're so welcome. It's my job. Do you know, um, I remember when you saying that you read uh, the Patanjali every day. Wayne Dyer says that he re reads or was reading for a while. Um, I don't know where he'd heard it from, um, like one sutra. And then the next day he'd read sutra one and two. And the next day one, two, three. And right. eventually he even levitated with this. Yeah. Just a bit of sharing. Okay, thank you. Good. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing, Rajni. Thank you. Yeah. That is very busy.